My name is Lauren, if you are new here, and I'm a third year medical student. If you're not new, then welcome back. I am an obstetrician gynecologist, or an ob -gyn for short, and we are running out the door right now to head to the night shift, so let's go. First, I'm just gonna play this cat TV for my child. Okay, we're on our way. I have to apologize for my recycling in the back. I'll just like, while I'm coming home, take them to the bin. Anyways, not important. Tonight we are on the night shift. This is my fourth night shift. Today's Tuesday, happy Tuesday. So I was on Monday night and then I'm on up until Thursday night and I was on last Thursday night and last Friday night. Let me just tell you, the night shift is not for the week. This is such a hard shift to have. It's currently 5.34 and my shift is from, what is happening with the lanes here? Oh my God, what happened? Oh my God, what happened? I don't know. Oh my God, I'm going. 6 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Usually a night shift is just 12 hours, but at 6.30 a.m. the day shift students come in and then I sign out to them, which is something that residents do. So we're practicing that at this site. And then from 6.30 to 7.30, I sit with the day students and with our attending and we discuss ob -gyn topics and guidelines and just like anatomy or different things that the attending has told us to look up like each one of us will be told to look up something like this morning because i was there this morning i was talking about pelvic organ prolapse but the attending expects you to know everything about whatever diagnosis that she has given you so you're basically getting drilled for like an hour <laughs> and it can be kind of nerve-wracking and if you don't know something because I think it's impossible to know everything like I did so well this morning but of course I didn't know the answer to every single question that she asked me but one thing that I have decided recently is I'm a medical student, obviously, <laughs> and I live a very stressful life. I'm not saying I live the most stressful life. I'm not saying, you know, I have a bunch of problems, but I'm saying I am on a pretty constant mode of stress, especially it being third year, because when I'm at the hospital, I feel like every action that I do is being judged for the grade that I'm gonna get. Every question that I ask, every answer that I get right or wrong, every action that I do, every initiative that I take. I just feel like everything that you do is being watched and judged and that's an exhausting feeling. And then when I'm home, I have to study, I have to keep up my apartment, like, you know, clean and stuff. I have to spend time with Faco, I have to spend time with friends and family. Like, I am stressed all the time to the point where sometimes I don't even feel the stress. But I have decided that if something that I am stressing about is not happening in the next like two hours, I'm not gonna let myself get stressed about it. So what I mean by that is, I literally was so stressed about these morning presentations because they're stressful. Like sitting there just getting like drilled about something from a professional who's been doing this for like 20, 30 years. But I told myself like if I'm not going to the hospital in the next hour or two, I'm not gonna let myself sit at home and just like think about this all the time. Like it's not healthy, I can't do it. It'll be okay, like I'm gonna be a doctor in a year and a half, shockingly. And uh, you know, if I get a question right or wrong, that's not gonna change, like everything will be fine. So I just wanted to put that out there. I got a little off topic with that. I was gonna say that at some point, but I was, Going back to the night shift and how rough it is, 6 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., my drive, my commute is 30 minutes. This morning I got home at 8 a.m., I fed Baco, I took a shower, and I got in bed at 8.30. By the time I fell asleep it was like just before 9 maybe. And then I had from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m like at home so I slept for five hours and then I had three hours of awake time to like eat and 
do whatever else I need to do. Like there's no time. I thought there was no time in a regular day shift, but no, there's no time in the night shift. There's no time at all. I'm super happy because this is my second week of this rotation of ob -GYN. It's five weeks total. So I'm happy that I'm getting this out of the way, like I'm the first night student, but I'm so tired, I'm so tired. And I'm doing all of this without coffee because the little Starbucks cafe in the hospital isn't open when I come in, like it closes at 2 p.m. So it doesn't help me. Last night I didn't get any sleep while I was at the hospital. When I was here last week, there was one day where I got two hours of sleep, so that was nice. I went like this two hours. <laughs> you guys know that scene from Shrek when it's like the gingerbread man and I don't know why I went like this. The gingerbread man and that bad guy or whatever, that villain, and he's like, three, my lord. Wait, I'm thinking of this wrong. I'm so tired. Like, I cannot describe how tired I am, but we must push through. We must push through. Anyways, the last thing I'm gonna say before I turn this camera off is what I do on the night shift. I said I'm on ob -GYN. The night shift is OB-focused, so I basically, I kind of just like sit around all night and wait for babies to be born, if I'm being honest with you. A lot of women deliver in the night. Last night was a super busy night. At one point we had like, I think total we had like 10 moms come in. Some were sent home because they weren't ready, some stayed, some delivered, some are still there that who haven't delivered yet. So last night was a super busy night. It was super busy when I left this morning too, like the board was filled of future moms, which, you know, happy for you moms, but like, please give me a break tonight. Like, please, please, please. I'm really praying for some sleep tonight. So that's what I do. I'm gonna take you along as much as I can. Usually a mom will come in, because she's having contractions, because she feels decreased fetal movements, which means she feels like her baby's not moving as much as it usually does, because her water broke, or because she has some other issue and she's coming to get induced, like if she has hypertension, something called preeclampsia, then that's something that as long as the mom is term, then they'll induce her for. A lot more moms than you would think get induced with, you know, different medications just to help dilate the cervix, ripen the cervix, all of that, so the baby can come out. I've only seen vaginal deliveries. I have not seen any C-sections yet. We're gonna see what happens tonight. Who knows what we'll get into. One perk about the night shift is you always get a good parking spot because everyone else has already gone home. <laughs> so great. It almost makes it worth it, you know? got here, the day students briefed me on what's happening, and uh, immediately we're doing a C-section. <laughs> so I'm putting my shoe covers on. This mom has been in labor for a long time, and she hasn't really made a lot of progress, so this is kind of like what we've come to is the C-section. But I'm sure everything will go well, and we will have a baby at the end of the day.
the bags under my eyes, I actually look like a skeleton. Like, this is not a Halloween mask. This is my actual face. Oh my gosh. I got out of the C-section, I think like an hour ago, maybe a little less. It was so fast. It was my first one. And uh, the doctors, like the surgeons just cut through the layers and then all of a sudden they just pull the baby out. Like the baby came out so fast. I was like, like <laughs> just like, like boop, baby was out. But it went well and I'm really happy for the new parents because the mom has literally been like in the early stages of labor for like two days. Like she's been here since Sunday. So I'm just really happy that they have their little family now. As you can see, I am laying in a bed. <laughs> I will show you this room because the rooms here for the on-call rooms are so nice. Not that I'm knocking my room at Temple, but there's a bathroom in here. Like the rooms are so nice here, probably because they're not like student rooms, they're like employee rooms. I have the computer up next to me so I can watch what's happening. I'm just gonna like lay here. I'm gonna do Duolingo right now. I actually started learning Spanish. I was doing some research to see like if you want to learn a third language, can you learn it while you're learning your second language or do you have to wait? And I saw some things that said learning two at the same time is actually a good idea. So I'm like pretty far along in French. Like I feel like I could hold a conversation in French. I just would have to like speak slower and like listen slower. But I really don't know much of Spanish because I took French in high school. So I started learning Spanish because when I was on my surgery rotation, it just seemed like everyone spoke Spanish and there's so many Spanish speaking patients here in Philly and honestly like everywhere. And I wanna be able to speak to my patients without translator. Not that, you know, translators are not great. They're like amazing, but I would like to be able to do that one day. So I have started learning Spanish. My favorite Spanish word at the moment is pasaporte. Um, let me see if I can say something. Yo necesito una pasaporte? Or is it, is it yo or is it me? Me necesito una pasaporte? I'm trying to say I need a passport. I don't know, I'm like seriously such a beginner. <laughs> I'm gonna do Duolingo, keep an eye on the board, possibly take like a 30 minute nap, we will see. And just like spend this time resting, gonna eat a little snack and enjoy my on-call room time. I've actually slept so much this night. It's 4.45 a.m. and there's a C-section happening, so. I took a nap, so I'm hoping I'm not late. My nap was like 45 minutes. It is 7.30 and I am about to go home, but um, I wanted to give you a quick little tour of my on-call room before I do. So here is the door and my very favorite feature is the thermostat. So I just turned it down to 74.5, but I was sitting at like 76.5 overnight. Here is my very, very slept in bed. We have a full size bed, which is lovely. A little nightstand. There is a computer in here if you need to look at charts and stuff. And this is what I use throughout the night if I'm up here to like monitor if any new patients come in downstairs. There is a TV, which is so lovely. I don't think I would ever use it, but it's very nice. And then a personal bathroom. So there's a shower over here, the lovely toilet and a wonderful sink and beautiful countertops. <laughs> so it's really nice here.
floor. I am in the car, it's 7.43. I am so excited to go home. Tonight was actually the most uneventful night that I have had overnight and I'm super grateful for it because honestly, after that first C-section, I just, like I had my call with my boyfriend who I haven't been able to like have a call with often because of the night shift because our schedules are weird so that was nice to catch up with him and then I did do a lingo like I said oh, I don't know if I mentioned this but there was a general surgeon who was assisting the OB in the c-section and he was like asking me some questions and he told me to go look them up and next time he saw me whenever that will be he's gonna ask me to answer the questions so I looked up that information just in case I saw him again that night and then I went to sleep and I just I slept and I slept and I slept and I set an alarm every 30 minutes to like okay I guess a tree just dropped a I don't know, an acorn on me? A, an acorn? An acorn on me or something? Oh, I'm so tired. And I set an alarm to go off every 30 minutes so I could wake up, check the computer, and make sure that no new patients came in or the one patient that was there wasn't going into labor and she was like nowhere near labor. I think she'll deliver today, but not anytime soon. And then the last time I spoke to you, I said I was going down to another C-section, but that person actually came in with preeclampsia so preeclampsia is when someone is pregnant and they are past 20 weeks gestation or like past being pregnant for 20 weeks and they have high blood pressure so I was like I know this like very well right now because I was supposed to look up the definitions and the guidelines to tell my attending tonight which I did tell her if they have blood pressure over 140 over 90 on two separate occasions as well as proteinuria which is protein in the urine which indicates a kidney injury or kidney dysfunction I guess then that is when someone is diagnosed with preeclampsia so this patient had preeclampsia and they were coming in because they said they were feeling weird which could indicate that the preeclampsia might turn into preeclampsia with severe features like the patient might have other organ involvement or preeclampsia can turn into eclampsia if the patient starts to have seizures so she already had a c-section scheduled for next week but she is gonna get a c-section this morning so I didn't end up going to the c-section because it actually is it was scheduled for after I left I just went down my attending was like do you want to take her history I was like sure so that was my first time taking an OB history and then I presented the patient to the attending she didn't say anything bad about my presentation. She gave me some like tips on how to organize it since it's unique to other histories because it's like very specific to like mom and fetal monitoring. And then she was just asking me about certain diagnoses and stuff and she told me to look stuff up and go back and talk to her. So yeah, that's what I did. And then my daytime attending came in and we discussed topics. We're still discussing my pelvic organ prolapse and we still didn't finish it so I guess I'm gonna be discussing that again tomorrow and that was my entire night so there's really nothing more to say with that I feel kind of bad because like I'm so grateful for like catching up on sleep tonight or yeah this past night but I also feel bad because <laughs> Nothing really exciting happened for this vlog, so I wasn't sure if I should continue it into tonight. But also my vlogs have been getting like super long and a short one might be a nice break for everybody involved. I'm gonna do another OB vlog when I'm back on the surgery side. I am very, very happily home. It is... Okay, give me one second. It is so gloomy out, which would be lovely. Like I would love a storm today if I didn't have to 
leave and go back in what feels like a few hours. Uh huh. Can you just give me one second? And then we'll cuddle, I promise. Sorry this vlog was not like super crazy eventful, but, but I think, Baco, stop. Okay, let's get him. Let's get him. Okay, come on. Can we pick you up? Is that what you want? All right, I get it. I was gone forever and now I'm talking to some camera. I'm so sorry. Come here, Vako. Vako, come. Stop playing around. All right, stop playing around. Sit down. We're together. Um, <laughs> my child. Yes, I am sorry it wasn't super eventful. I feel like that kind of demonstrates though, like the difference between nights. I told you my night last night, or I guess last night was my night that I filmed. So the night, Monday night was super, super crazy. And last night wasn't, so that is that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for my next OB vlog if you are interested in seeing that. And if you like the video, then like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, I'm going to eat a little breakfast, cuddle my cat who is screaming his little head off, and then I'm going to go to sleep. So I will see you all in the next one. Bye.